what this video is about is the question of relationship and is it more satisfying to be in a relationship than it is not to be in a relationship, to be single? Well, that would be, a, it depends upon the relationship. For some of us, we've had terrible relationships and had the misfortune of having them with narcissists. So speaking from my experience personally, that was mine. And therefore to stay in that relationship would have been to my own demise. I've got plenty of videos on that and that's not the point of this one. So I've strung together a little hodgepodge for you to enjoy and you will see it coming up. And I've come full around to uh, the statement of fact I have is that I was never more unhappy than when I was in a relationship. And I never felt more alone than being in a relationship with those distant, emotionally uh, bankrupt men. Abusive on many levels. People are going to be like, wow, okay. Cold shoulder, <laughs> anger, argumentative, confrontational, gaslighting, cheating on you, always angry, okay? They're not normal people. So, one like a person like myself or a human being that's at a high consciousness level in their 30s even that is not able to find a relationship, it's better to just work on yourself, be with who you are yourself. It's better to be with yourself than it is with a fucked up person. That's the bottom line. And so, I have now grappled with the reality of, yes, I will be alone for the rest of my life, possibly, but to not live it like I am in my mind, like I'm missing something. It's a switch. It's an attitude that has to be made or your life will be miserable because you'll always be unsatisfied with being single. So what happens if there are no men? What happens if he doesn't exist? Or what happens if I haven't gotten to the self-development I need to, to attract such a man? There's that. To become the person I was meant to be. There's that. Hi, everybody. So, at whatever age you are, at some point, whether you are single or in a relationship, you're not satisfied with your situation. Well, this video is about being single and not satisfied with your situation. And this could happen at any age. So then, not only is this video about not being satisfied, but also being satisfied. So it's, so it's taking the situation and doing a 180. Yeah. And I recognize when I, I hear about channels that talk about the men going your own way, that, the, um, that movement, that in addition to it being a nice beacon of light on the fact that men are carrying the brunt of financial burden um, by the court systems because the states are actually receiving a commission on every single wage garnishment. So it creates a state that then looks at that father as a monetary asset. So then you have that. So we need to have reformation on that level of family court. 
There's so that's an hour video. You can go into it like prenuptials and what happens if he philanders. And the fact is that men are biologically uh, wired to fuck everything in sight because how do they actually like 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 harness their sexual energy and not squander it on pornography, not um, put all of their lust and passion into a woman that's a prostitute or that they meet online through a dating app and that they go online, these, these married men, and they feign like they're single, but they're actually just looking for sex except like as soon as possible. And it was such an awful experience. I did not realize online dating was so trashy. It's the most terrible experience for the sensitive person. It's the most treacherous, awful experience. So I'm like, I'll just do my regular activities and he'll find me. So that, email. you don't need to go onto online dating apps. You just do have to do your regular activities and he will find you. And guys, the same things. Just do your regular activities and you'll find her. And then you guys will... Yes, I can. So humans are wired for relationship, but we're in a world where it's not possible because there aren't a significant amount of healthy men to healthy female ratio on both sides ratio on both sides you see so for men who are single and healthy minded they have to then recognize what their arousal jag is and that brings me Is. And that brings me to that guy, I think his Sandman, Sandman, yeah, um, of men going their own way movement. Mick going their own way. Mick toe? <laughs> like big toe? Is that it? Going their own way. Mick toe. Big toe. All right, that's how I remember it. My big toe needs work. <laughs> anyway, I'm Mick toe, Mick toe adjacent. And uh, Cat in the Vat, another channel, reached out to me for a convo, and I had never heard of this person. And I went on, I clicked on, and they had spoken to Sandman. And then I listened to uh, Sandman's conversation with another channel. <laughs> Huh, interesting. We have a really uh, unique opportunity to learn from each other. But my um, weaknesses are imposter syndrome. Yeah. So if any of you have imposter syndrome, you know what I'm talking about. It's treacherous. You want to do this with your bra strap if you're a female. Or do that thing like... Every single time you have a self-deprecating thought, go boof. So you register it. <laughs> Why do you think I have so many of these on? <laughs> that was a joke, but I like it. I actually, I became the family comedian in order to alleviate stress in the family because that's what I grew up with, high level of stress high trauma, 
So comedy was, was my modus operandi. With a narcissist parent, it's um, fight, flight, freeze or fawn, fight, flight, fight, fight, flight, freeze or fawn, fight, flight, freeze or fawn. <laughs> What would you do? I, I, I did a combination of things. I did a lot of um, freeze growing up. Uh, fight was not possible other than with my siblings. It was not possible other than with my siblings. Uh, fight was not possible other than with my siblings. Freeze for sure. And then fawning came later in the form of being a, the, the gesture, being the, the ha-ha, you know, being the, the one that makes jokes in the family. So on the last one, we're all still alive. Even my parents is wild. Not only is this video about not being satisfied, but also being satisfied. So it's so it's taking the situation and doing a 180. Yeah. And so at 60, I found myself single and I re realized I stayed in a relationship that was toxic for so long because I really did like the sex. And so I realized that was my weakness. I admit it me in fact i had a um husband i've had two husbands i picked uh, a narcissist ones that modeled my mother before i became conscious of the fact i was doing that but this particular one would actually punish me by not having sex with me and instead he went and wed with a stupid tissue, computer porn. porn. And I found out what he was into. This is the one I, I miss. I miss all of, I miss the loving person. The narcissist was in fleeting moments. Well, they then would turn off their wives and then turn on themselves to black on blondes and fisting. <laughs> Told you what it is. He didn't know how to erase his history. And I was working in the internet technology um, industry and I got to know a thing or two. And so when we got our first computer, he didn't know that I could follow his every move. And I didn't know that until I stumbled upon it while investigating what a computer's all about. I was doing engineering work, you know. Uh, I... But the main thing I wanted to drive home well to present is that when you grow up in a in a mind thought that to be happy to is to be in partnership and that you fail to be in partnership because you have standards such as the ability to live through it the ability to maintain health through it it being a relationship if that becomes not possible in the given inventory of humans then so then what well and i believe in love so then what well <sighs> for me to work on myself and present to the world what it is god intended allah god Um, who, you, you, you know, ah, uh, the creator, ah, ha, ha, earth, mother earth, father up high somewhere. <laughs> I, I, 
have a soul recollection. And I'm not denying miracles and the magnificent masters in each of these belief systems. I'm not. What I am saying is that as a child, I had a sense of reality that superseded Christianity. And when I was thrown into the closet, not physically, when I was sent to my room to consider my misdeeds. When I told my mother I loved her and she suspected me of a misdeed, she punished me for it because nobody says I love you without wanting something, she said to me. I'll find out what it is, by golly. So you can tell me now what it is you did or later. But when I find out, it's going to be worse. So you can tell me now or later. And I'm like, I don't have anything to tell you. I just told you I loved you, man. I'm thinking in my head. So she sends me to my room. And I was curious about that as a child. And I went into my closet and I cried. And I said to my older sister, before I excommunicated her from my life because of her toxicity, I said, you know, we got sent to our room so often, I found God in the closet, you know? I found God in the closet because I was there being punished and I would feel a divine presence of love, just loving me, just being there, right? And then I had another experience with the Christos and we'll save that for another video. And I believe in love. So then what? Well, then what? Well, I, I told you earlier, Walter Russell, the Universal One, and then... The Universal One, and then uh, William James uh, wrote the book, something about primary psychology. In the in the outline alone, the books, like index, like in the beginning of the book, like what's in it, that alone are talking points. I'm going to, I'm going to go on every single one of them. What do you call that in the beginning of the book? Index chapters, like when they tell you t -t 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 outline, like where you, it is exactly all you need to follow. And it goes into the mind, the constructs of the mind. And I experience when you're in, in, in an abusive situation from narcissistic abuse, um, there's an arousal jag that's sexual that stems from a parent. And I'm not going to talk about it because it's too personal. It's a book of itself. It's an expose. And this is a woman going her own way. Um, a male going their own way adjacent. <laughs> I'm the, I'm the MIG, uh, what is it? MIG going their, men going their own way. MIG toe. A MIG toe adjacent. I respect men. I did the opposite when I divorced the men. I actually made, I, we, uh, I did agreements with him outside of the court and um, I'm rare. So I know that I'm that 0.5005% that uh, everyone talks about. I'm that true unicorn. And yes, I was a stripper to get my way through college to boot. <laughs> yep. So truth be known. Uh, that's why I have this channel. Initially, uh, it was to maintain sanity, but now it's like, hey, eventually pe people are going to wake up and have conversations about the convoluted nature of sexuality on this planet. I'll be able to give firsthand accounts of what men love and how everybody that uh, I know that knew that I was in a peep show thought I did blowjobs, but I said, no, blowjobs aren't my thing. I'm a phone sex specialist. And I was beautiful. I had men come in. They said, you're too beautiful to be here. And I said, but that is why I'm here. I didn't do these $80 blowjobs. I took off my clothes and I posed. 
where I spoke to the men. Taxes. So, okay. So, this is not about that. Ugh. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, there are no good men left on the planet in my age, age 60, without more baggage than I have, or they have less baggage than I have and they want nothing to do with me. Well, so I have to meet them in life. So this is not an advertisement. This is not a singles ad for a, a partner. Au contraire. This is a conversation in which deciding to be single, especially since as a female, I bond sexually. So getting, getting to the sexual point is going to be the longest dance. Um, I have to know a man so thoroughly, so, so, so thoroughly. It makes me sick thinking about having sex with a man that doesn't get me. Um, it would be a vile. Yeah. So yes, I'm in this wonderful place actually of healing and of recognizing where my uh, standards are and my willingness to be single, autonomously so, for the rest of my life, facing the music, hence the keyboard, facing the music and the dance of life that I may be dancing by myself for the rest of it. And it all depends on what I choose. And so this video might just wrap up that whole dating online thing, single thing, and I'm going to move on to other things. I'm now going on to the works of um, Walter Russell and the Universal One, as well as just the index outline alone of the book, The Principles of Psychology, I believe is the name of the book. I think it was written in the early 20s by... Um, William James. So learning how to look at life differently, learning how to be okay. I'm not missing anything. And then, then to create your own life. I've been waiting for this guy to go camping with so that I feel protected. Well, now I have to do it myself. And I've been wanting to figure out my mind so that I can direct my life more thoroughly after the trauma I've been through. Heightened spiritual experiences mixed in there, but things that really derailed a normal life. That has made it extra hard. And uh, you can go fuck yourselves, people who, do, who go, oh, what's she complaining about? Look how good she has it. Everybody has difficulties, and these are mine. And if they're hard enough for you, then you can go win the victim of the of the year uh, medal. I don't want to be a victim. I want to be a victor. I want to experience what I've experienced. I want to get through what I've gotten through, and I I wish to have it then become a badge of honor that I bestow upon myself. I don't need anybody else to tell me how great I am or how fantastic it is for me to have gotten through what I've gotten through and maintained a sense of self. And I have a long way to go, but I refuse to listen to those people who say, Oh, you're, you don't live in the ghetto. You don't have a crappy life or whatever. Or like, you're just an American white chick, white privilege. You know, shit like that. I was like, well, you got a point there. But you know what? I still have a story to tell, so shut up. I had some, This is really funny. I, I had somebody on YouTube, uh, not a subscriber, I don't think. But if they are, it's the kind of funny. Uh, but they go, um, be quiet and get a cat. <laughs> And I was like, your advice is better suited to somebody else. I am a cat. 
So what does a cat do? A cat looks for ways to comfort themselves. And in so doing, that comfort, they, they purr, they're happy, they set themselves into a situation where they uplift everybody. What's not lovable about a cat that's loving life? You look at a cat and, and you go, oh, that's a happy cat. And it makes you feel all warm and fuzzy, just like their fur. Okay, all for, all for now, join me, continue on my journey, subscribe, of course, and like this and share it. But more and most importantly, live the life you care to live, and you can share that too. What has turned your boat around? Huh? <laughs>